What's up, y'all? This is Miss Devoted Tiff back with my commentary on Real Housewives of Atlanta, talking about season nine, episode 18. So, this episode had a lot of moving parts, a lot of things to chime in on. It wasn't quite as boring as last episode, but it went too far from it. Still, I'm a loyal fan and I got stuff to say, so let's just get into it. The episode starts out with Cynthia get ready for her cargo bags fashion show. Her partner is there. She's going to be meeting with Sheree and her cute little son, Cairo, that's trying to get into the modeling business. And um, Sheree is momager, Lord help us all. And so they come in, her daughter's there too, and she's basically working with both of them on their walk. So Cairo's walk, mmm moving on swiftly and they tell him you know you're not too bad definitely got some work we can do and then here comes Sheree Lord she better be lucky Cynthia's her friend because how she was acting would not fly in the actual modeling world of being a momager so she goes is there compensation now y'all know she already had asked Cynthia that a few episodes ago and Cynthia told her no it's his first time it's for exposure he may get her back so she asked again I think she asked again in front of the partner to see what he would say um or if there was a different answer and Cynthia changed her mind girl no and what made it worse is after his walk it was clear they was doing them a favor because it was horrible like it was not good so then we go over to Portia and Phaedra. Um, they're on the phone and Portia presents her, um, Portia talks about working on this baby nut. Now if y'all remember, um, a while back she had mentioned it to her and asked um, Phaedra if there was such a thing. Now my personal take on it, I think it is a good idea if you can have prenups um, over a marriage, why can't you have a baby nut? over something as serious as a baby now in this situation they ain't even like decide they gonna have a baby they're not even engaged like she just found a man she's attracted to doesn't mind dating and she's thinking about having a baby with him i mean i know her biological clock is ticking but i think that should be her last resort and she should you know try to make sure she has something concrete with him i mean does he even have a job right now and she's trying to work on a baby nut shady Fei Fei being what her name is she definitely was throwing little digs talking about um you know you don't want to have what should call it a hot dog bun vagina a vagina that is so wide and so used that is as big as a hot dog bun I'm like, how you gonna shade your own friend like that on camera? And you kind of giving away her business because the way you talking sound like she been busy. Then we go over, we go over to Kenya and her friend Shay. She's basically recapping the Miami trip, saying how she feels about how Phaedra kind of turned on her based on the divorce party. Now, y'all know I'm not Team Kenya at all, any way, shape, or form but I will call a spade a spade and I do not think that Kenya's intentions were bad do I think it's important was in poor taste because you should clear that with your friends that's not a surprise party that you want to throw a divorce party because you don't know where their mindset is about the divorce however I think that she was trying to do something fun create a little storyline for herself other than Matt you know seeing for herself throwing this divorce party she talks about Matt how the situation is complicated it's not complicated at all I mean he's violent and you are manipulative and want it your way or the highway you play mind games with him he gets angry and overreacts and goes too far and y'all just shouldn't be together so then we go over to Candy her little son Ace is so cute that's pretty much the only good thing I can say about Candy these days oh that and the fact that she's a businesswoman I will never take that away from her she is doing her thing we all could learn a lot from her in that sense um and so her family is asking about phaedra and you know the mama because i think the mama is still upset with phaedra for even introducing her and todd but any chance she can get to try to take a little dig at phaedra she's going to so she tried to be all 
slick and put on a sweet voice which is impossible for her to do because even her sweet voice still sounds to me a little icky and so she was like <laughs> she was like oh how's Phaedra in the divorce and of course now everybody knows that they do have the divorce and um so she came out the bag about that and Todd comes in and talks about the restaurant and how it's going and that's pretty much that scene then we go to um, Portia and Portia's Todd and <laughs> he is hilarious like Todd is just so clearly sprung by this girl like he is like a little 15 year old boy with raging hormones he cannot keep his hands off of her it's just hilarious and um she's like well hopefully you still feel this way after I show you what I gotta show you she whips out the baby nub I wish I could have got a better look at it but based off of his reaction, it must have been really crazy because he's like, basically, what does this have to do with me? The way he put it, everything on the baby nup was stuff that would benefit her and what she wants to happen with the baby, but not, um, you know, what would benefit him. And she's like, well, you can redline it. And he just did a big line there and said consider it red well, I'm not signing this anybody and basically that is trying to be a good father would not sign this baby now and I think you know that showed his intentions that you know he really does care about her and if they were to have a baby he would really care about the baby which she knew that that's why she picked him so I think that she a, I think that she is still really traumatized and just jaded by what happened with her and her ex and you know things didn't go how she thought it would go in that situation and she's afraid of not being in control or a man totally like doing a 180 on her again and I think this is her way of like I'm gonna make sure I'm in control of everything that's important to me and you know I won't feel comfortable moving forward with him unless he agrees to A, B, and C. Like everything is like a business deal kind of thing. But I really do think that's just her way of protecting herself. But with a guy like Todd, that's clearly not going to work. And I'm again, I'm not against the idea of a baby nup. But if it's with somebody you care about and it's not a scenario where, you know, you got pregnant with a guy and y'all broke up and you want to say, hey, well, here's this baby nup so that no matter what happens with our relationship we agree that we're gonna do this for the baby you know we agree to this type of custody arrangement but with somebody that she's currently dating she probably should have sat down and said okay well what do you want what would you like what do you think is best for the baby well here's what I think was best for the baby they come to an agreement put that all down in the baby up and sign it but you know that's not how Portia did it so now we're at the cargo shows backstage. Cynthia's doing her businesswoman thing. It's looking good. Everybody's setting up. Um, Noelle is excited and she's so mature. I just love the scenes with her and seeing her wisdom because she was saying, I didn't invite any of my friends because I didn't want to be distracted at all. She is taking it very seriously. Meanwhile, Cairo is not there and they're having to call and look for him. His mama don't know where he is. Um, I was looking on Twitter and she said that they're trying to act like he was an hour late he wasn't. I don't know. But I know for the fashion industry, models cannot be late. And if you are late, you need to call. He shows up, he's so blase with it. Like, they ask him what happened and he says nothing. He just kind of stands there. And uh, Sheree shows up and she's ready with the shade. It reminded me of Kenya's um, housewarming all over again. Cause she was like oh it was water in the street and Sheree is so bougie she cannot even help herself and it cracks me up every time because I could count on her <laughs> to like throw her shade at whatever event she's at and so she's like oh where's the fan I gotta where's the air I gotta create my own air and um, the other guy he tries to shade her a little bit but he did have a right to ask why Kyra was late because they both took a chance on him and so she was like um well I don't have to answer to you but if you are a real legit momager, the client is kind of the one, not kind of, the client is the one that you have to respect. And if your client is late, you should be able to provide a reason or at least an apology. So the fashion show gets started. Noelle opens the show. She does an amazing job. Gets to Cairo. He did really good. I can tell that he worked on his walk and Kenya a little thirsty behind. Like she, the camera cut over her real quick and she like sticking her tongue out. 
But I was kind of wondering where Peter was because not coming for Cynthia, but coming for Noel because they did have their relationship. He was in her life since he was eight. So I was surprised that he wasn't there to support Noel and low key to support Cynthia. But um, I'm assuming he was doing something with bar one or doing someone. Oops, I didn't mean to say that. We go to Phaedra and she is at a, a she is at a colleague's office. And it's the Johnny situation. Now, if y'all remember a few episodes back, Johnny had came to her after he got fired because he felt like he wasn't properly compensated and some ideas were stolen from him. And um, but that basically, he had one job description for which he got paid A, B, C amount, but he was actually doing more than his job description. And for that stuff, for the amount of work he did, he felt like he had been underpaid. And basically they kind of, he kind of portrayed it like they used him and then when they was done with him, they was done with him. Candy, Candy seems like a supportive person. I don't know if she would ever do that. I don't completely trust Don Juan. So if he was his direct report, I think things could have went down where Don Juan was like, you know, maybe not on the level as far as how much they were using his skill set or maybe not paying him properly. And then he kind of go back to Candy and you know put his little spin on like oh he's fine or oh, he said it was fine like you know those things kind of happen in small businesses even though the empire is big the amount of employees is small so it's possible anyway so she i was surprised to see her because she seemed so adamant when he first came to her as oh i don't want nothing to do with it you know we are friends i am not that type of lawyer um, but if she wanted to try the case, she would have tried the case. She would have, because she does all kinds of law. Like, she's done stuff that has nothing to do with her actual title of an entertainment lawyer. I mean, she didn't help people get off, get out for having weed. So, I don't know why she tried to say that. She should have just said, I don't want to be involved because it has to do with, um, a friend of mine or a castmate of mine, whatever. So, I was surprised to see her there. She briefed him on it and then she stayed for the meeting and um, he goes a little bit more into details, you know, saying that there was ideas ripped off such as the play of Mother's Love and such as the restaurant. Gosh, you know, I don't know if he has a case. Now, by no means am I a lawyer, but I am a smart girl and there's so many holes in this situation because if he wasn't paid properly, he should have discussed that at the time. And if he wasn't happy, he should have left. He also said that he brought up the restaurant actually to be a silent partner. And then for eight months, she didn't say anything. But if I am asking you for an investment, I don't not going to wait on you to come to me. I'm going to like keep following up with you. I'm going to be asking you like I'm going to be bugging you until I get an answer. So that just didn't line up to me also um if it was an issue then why would you wait until after you got fired to say something like it seems like he's just more upset about being fired and now he's trying to do stuff i'm not buying phaedra not wanting to be involved because she literally could have given him the business card of the guy sent over and brief the guy the information and been about her way why would she record with them and why would she record on camera it just doesn't add up to her saying she don't want to be involved so then the last scene is matt and kenya oh they wear me out it's literally the same scenario every time he overreacts and goes too far she says i'm done they end up talking the conversation goes well you know you've done a lot to hurt me that you haven't admitted to and she goes well i could have put you in jail and i didn't and then they go stop talking again obviously the d is controlling this whole relationship because that's the only way she would keep coming back to somebody that bust out holes in her house and was so violent that she was telling all of her friends you know he's doing all these things to get my attention that's the only thing it must be outstanding girl get help so they're talking and she brings up the conversation he had with cynthia and then he kind of brings up his side and says you know the only issue is you've never said you're sorry or you don't talk about what you've done so then she gets up and walks out 
she doesn't typically own up to what she's done unless she is extremely backed into a corner. Matter of fact, and the only time I saw her apologize was to Cynthia for the way she acted in her room. She is such a sweet and sour patch candy. She'll, you know, just kind of berate him and like, oh, you did this, you did this, you're horrible, you this, you that. And then when he start feeling guilty and crying and just kind of cowering in the corner, she'll be like, oh, you know, don't feel that way, don't feel that way, we can work it out, we can work it out. So I literally can't with her in that relationship. They say they're done, they do this dramatic of her walking, in the hall, walking down the hallway away from him. So we'll see if that actually happens. Next week looks pretty juicy. We're gonna meet Apollo's fiance, which I think it's horrible that his friends on the outside are talking to her. Child, I don't know. But stay tuned. Let me know what you think about Candy in this restaurant and her family members. Let me know what you think about this baby nup. Let me know what you think about Kenya and Phaedra's new beef. Let me know what you think about Kenya and Matt. And let me know what you think about this cargo line and Cynthia and Sheree acting like a momager but not really a good one in my opinion. And what do you think about Cairo and how he did? That's all. I'll catch you next time. This is Miss Devoted Tiff. Bye.